get out cold as a motherfucker. Oh God. Hey, yeah. Valley Talk episode. We making history today. You know that, right? <laughs> Let's go. I got the co mayor, co mayor, vice mayor, vice mayor, yeah. Kyle, my N I G G A. <laughs> what did I tell you about wearing a Raider gear, bro? Bro, <laughs> gotta represent. We came through two more games. Let's go. Still got the golf hat though. Get Keep it classic. Later, man. We got some El Reaper chicken. Been teasing hey, me for hey, a minute. Hey, take a little bite good. of that show. I'll check it out. You said I'll check it out. Okay. Thought you can have me over to start. What is this? Valley Talk. We got that. Make sure you mango, like and subscribe. Mango habanero. Right? What is that? Mango? mango Which is the cayenne. Mm. You gonna eat the hot one later? Make sure you subscribe. If I get at least 50 subscribers, we're gonna keep this shit rolling. Oh, dude. Hey, shout out to El Reaper Chicken. We fuck with you, bro. Okay. Straight up. Yeah? The, the chicken is peppered. Uh, you can see the chicken is peppered underneath the actual bread, but it's also juicy as if it's like saturated. <laughs> it's marinated. Why are you giving a real review? Because I get in there, get in it. That's good. I, I'm a, I'm That's a chef. good. Low key, I'm a chef. Okay. I get down. Try that other one. What's the other one? Uh, damn. You guys making me want to take the mask off. Grab one, bro. bro. On the real? Ooh, Try this. Nah. Let me try that one. <laughs> hey. We're going to talk about a lot of shit today. We're going to give Oscar going to tell us about his upbringing, plans for Indio. That was good, too. Some Stanford talk. Oh, man. Man. El Reaper, dude. El Reaper. That's good. My wife would love this. You already trained the L Reaper? I hope not. Nah. The cayenne. <laughs> you about to die. I'm going to work my way up. <laughs> we'll get it. So, out of get a one seat. out of a one through ten, what do you oh, rate man. it? That's nine be honest, nine. be honest. That's, a, that's some of the best chicken I've had. Best so. chicken in the Indio? I don't know, man. The, the other one food. I like, uh, my homie Oscar had a little company for a while. They have chicken sandwiches going. That was so good, too. Yeah. But these, these keep up with that one. What, what sure. are you rating, Kyle? I like that kind of... Dude, I oh, like how you can actually good. taste the difference in flavors and how juicy the actual chicken is. Cause it is. You go to KFC, you go to Carl's Jr., a little quick. It is not juicy. It's just nasty. Like, no. Bro, don't be disrespecting KFC. Hey, like I, I still get it. you fucked up, bro. I'm, I'm going to buy it next week. I don't care. <laughs> but if you want to pay for that quality, straight up. I'm, nah, where I mean, are they from? He got good. He's from Indio. You, They're from Indio? got stickers right there. Throw them up. That's you know what I mean? There you go. They got a business hey, card. Bro, you got the mayor right there hey, throwing good, up man. that chicken. Supporting that small business, man. Uh, hey. They do it better anyway. You're going to put them in there. You're going to check them out down there. <laughs> Dude, that Reaper is about to. Mm. Uh, episode nine, we got my, my desert advisor in the building. Yeah, hey, I appreciate you. We got Mr. Oscar, <laughs> the vice mayor. Dude, hey, good to see you, man. It's good to see you too. It's been a while. It's been a long while, bro. High school. At least 30 years. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not that old. We get in there, but we're not that old. <laughs> But, yep, yeah, man, let's just start it off, bro. Where are you from? Uh, I'm originally from Mexicali. Mexicali, yeah. Mexicali, or Mexico, Mexicali? Mexicali. Oh, yeah, you in the trenches. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. what's up. So, so you started in Mexicali and you... I, I was born there, but we moved here to Indio when I was, like, three years old, so... Oh, you were three? Yeah, but we, we spent a lot of time in Mexico when I was little, visiting... All my family still over there. Most of my family still in Mexico, so... So your first language is uh, Spanish. Spanish? For sure, yeah. Okay, yeah. You yeah. speak hell. You speak better English than me. That's why I had to ask. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> Straight up. <laughs> so, uh, so how'd you get here? Uh, I mean, we, my parents used to work in the farms, so oh, there was uh, there were some bills that passed. I think it was during Reagan's time, where they started giving permits to a lot of the farm workers to start getting their green cars to come out here and work. Something we need to do now, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
That's but, what's up. Yeah, they came on through here. And then uh, my dad was working in the farms. My mom did housekeeping. She still does housekeeping, so. Oh, we're just keeping it. Yeah, we're still working. That's a real hustle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That ain't no easy-ass yeah. job to be yeah. real with you. Luckily, she owns her own business now, so she's like running her own thing. So oh, she's making she that likes fetty it. Fetty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. So yeah. you came here and was that like in 1995? 93. 94? 93? Yeah. Damn, I was barely born around then. Now Dang. I think about it. <laughs> what about you, Kyle? Yeah, we, we, we're the same age. When did, like, you meet, when did you meet Mr.? Third grade? Third grade. Third grade. Third grade. Oh, that was the first class mm-hmm. that I had that was all English. I used to have bilingual, and then mm-hmm. the first class I had Did all you English struggle? Time. Nah. I mean, I think, like, kindergarten, but I think I was just more, like, spacing out all the time. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. but then, I, I, like, second grade, I started, like, really accelerating what, uh, a little bit more. What school did you go to? I was at Kennedy. Kennedy. Kennedy? Right there off of Clinton Street. That's Kennedy right. got a lot of fucking famous motherfuckers <laughs> on the bro. Man, I cool. mean, shout out to Van Buren. That's where I went. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's what's up. So you came here. You went to Kennedy, yeah. and then you ended up at Indio High School, bro. Indio High. That's right. Yeah, I met a lot of good people there. A lot you of met good a friends. lot, bro. You had a high ass GPA. What was yeah. it? I had a four point nine GPA there. Four point nine? Is that fucking possible? Yeah. The, the honors classes, AP classes, and all that. <laughs> 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 bro, yeah. bro. Four point fucking nine. Yeah, I think 4. I had like 9, one, one B during high school. One or B, yeah, something like that. Was it that easy? Nah, man. <laughs> I was studying all the time. What like made you get that? Like, what was your? I think just seeing... studying all the time. Sorry, yeah. studying. People don't know how much work goes into. It. I oh, sorry man. to interrupt, but oh, dude. people think that you're just smart. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Well, he put in the work. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, my sister's smart as fuck, and she didn't have no four. I don't even think she had a four. Yeah. So 4.9, dear God. Nah, yeah, I stay up to like midnight studying a lot of times. Midnight? So one in the morning, two in the morning, and get up for zero period and go. But what there. made you stay up that late? I think just seeing that my parents were always working, so I just mm. thought that you're supposed to always be working. Yeah, that's right. But also, like, when we were trying to have fun, they were like, nah, like, go do your homework and then you can go out to the park, whatever you want. So we go home, come home, do all our homework, trying to crank a lot out. You try to knock it on the intern. Yeah, up. Then, then we go play Get football. Get on the video the park, games or whatever. Then, yeah, we go, out, we go out play football, soccer, whatever. We, we're usually out. Yeah, I heard about you 08 niggas. Y'all used to think <laughs> you guys could ball. We'll get <laughs> into that later. <laughs> come on, so uh, you finished high school with a 4.9. And uh, bro, I remember the speech you gave when you yeah. gr- when you graduated, bro. Yeah. That shit was deep because, yeah. I mean, you, I mean, we boys and all, but when you gave that speech, I was just like, damn, bro. Like <laughs> the next dude that could see this can make it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because it's not like you just made the speech and fell off. You actually did big things. You went to Stanford. Mm-hmm. You came back, now you're vice mayor, bro. That's like, that's not no regular gig. Yeah. You know what I mean? To be the mayor that's of right. your hometown. That's right. That's a dream, bro. Like, yeah. a lot of people can see you and be like, damn, I want to be like Oscar. You know what I mean? Nah, I appreciate it. Yep. I I, ain't, yeah. I ain't mean to give you the jingles, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but how was it like at Stanford? It was good, man. Just going out there and seeing. I think the, the best part of it was just meeting people from all over the world, you know? Right. Because when you're in India, there's so much of the, of the same here, right? I mean, there's still a lot of different people here now, but it's not like college about, though. Nah, yeah. it's different. So a lot of Chinese, have, Indians, Black, oh, Mexicans, white, from Saudi Arabia, Germany, <laughs> Mexico. <laughs> like you, you see races you never even thought about. You like nah, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> my one of my friends, well, my first roommate was from Bangladesh. Ends up being a really smart dude. Bangladesh. Yeah. Where's the? And now he's like on Forbes magazine and stuff. Like this guy's. Oh, dang. He's smart. Yeah. yeah. Hit me up, bro. He did, like, <laughs> <laughs> hey, roll through. Oscar's, yeah. Oscar's roommate. So, that, yeah, we would get to meet a lot. I mean, I think in our floor, we had a guy that was trying to get recruited by the Padres. We had an Olympian from Spain. We had, like, all kinds of good athletes, too. Yeah, you, well, especially at Stanford, you had Andrew Luck. You yeah, had Andrew Luck. Toby Andrew Luck. Gerhardt. Toby Gerhardt. Is that how you say? Yeah. Oh, my God. He was a beast. Yeah, that was fun. The list games. goes on, We used bro. to get into the in the games for free. Grunk? No, nah, not Gronkowski. Did he, he didn't go there, did he? Gronkowski? Nah. Oh, yeah. No. <laughs> Zach Ertz went there. You, went to, you had a lot, of, a lot of games. I remember seeing you guys at Stanford games. Yeah. Representing Stanford. With the shirt off. Uh, <laughs> 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 
<laughs> Don't think we forgot, bro. bro. We, <laughs> you was on that Tibet <laughs> Indio too, bro. Yeah, Represent. Oh, we had that. Oh, hey, shout out, out to O Eight, bro. They used yeah, to go down at the basketball games. Dude, bro. we used to a hey, fanfare like crazy. Yeah, like, yeah. support yeah. anybody cool, and everybody. Man. That was cool seeing everybody show up for like the basketball games and everything. Support. That's I remember the whole, the whole, the whole. Whatever it was, just support, man. You gotta support your people. That's cool. That's what's up. So, what? Uh, you graduated. What did you do after college? Well, in, in college, I studied chemistry, so when I graduated, I went to, um, I started working in pharmaceuticals, so I was in pharmaceuticals for about six months, something like that, and that, I just felt like it was, it just wasn't right, it was just too wasteful, I remember yeah. making medicine and seeing, like, how wasteful everything was, I was right, like, there's right, gotta right. be a better way. You're trying to make and, a change. Yeah, it was just, too, it was good money, like, right. that's the thing, if, if I would've just stayed on that track, I'd have a... Big nice home in the hills somewhere or you something. Donald Trump like, right nah. now, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. then I ended up going to the veterans hospital and I, I ended up helping them out. They were working with UCLA at the time and they were making we were making radioactive materials and they were using them for brain scans that they were using for like treatments and stuff. So they were studying treatments on like addicts and stuff like that and seeing okay. how it changed the receptors in the brain. Like if you went to a treatment, like if it was a drug treatment or a therapy treatment, they would check how does it actually change your receptors in your brain, like physically. Oh, and shit. so that's what they were using some real for. shit. Yeah, yeah. So I was doing that with UCLA for a little bit, and then um, I actually got into. I started working with this with this company doing research on cannabis, and I th I thought that was gonna be the next thing coming. This is like back in 2013, you know. And so it was still there. There wasn't any regulations on it, so there was pesticides and all kinds of material. That nasty like, shit. Yeah. The edibles were not. Gr you yeah. know, you just had two x five x Like who knows what that is? Yeah. yeah. And so I saw that yeah. there was so much room for improvement. You know, like this. What I'm doing in in pharmaceuticals is going to have to happen in weed eventually. Yeah, and yeah, that's yeah. what this company was doing. That they were testing for the potency and the pesticides and all that stuff. Is that like what year is this? This is like 2013. We were we were people were that I I heard people were making wax with, like, butane and other things. We still things. do, but before they used to just do it out in the open, you know, and there's all yeah. kinds of explosions. So now you do it with regulations, and you got Motherfuckers are blowing exhaust. up their houses yeah, doing that shit. Happens. <laughs> happens. Yes. Yeah, it's so people, dangerous. Yeah. Yes. So it's it's, it's kind of crazy, like, how far wax has came, bro. Like, if you actually were there when it first started, the I whole remember whole when that shit was black. Dog. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's rare you see some black shit nowadays. I don't know what you're talking about. No. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but so well, you... I was actually one of the first companies that do did distill it. So the first time that it was pure, oh, the first people to manufacture like the ninety percent stuff where you were taking out uh, all of, like the extra materials, you know, and right, just purifying right, right. it to that level of like gold. And so we did that for a while, and then I started making my own medications. As I was working there, started you making you made your own medications. Like so I would CBD, right? Uh, no, I was I was doing THC at the time, and I was actually we started working with CBD too it, when it was very early on, twenty to fourteen, around that year. Many people didn't have it, and so we were working with um, some organizations that worked with like AIDS patients, cancer patients, uh, kids with epilepsy. So remember when those uh, early on when they started coming out on CNN and all that stuff? Yeah. So a lot of those people were actually working with and making the medicines for them. For them to dose with like the kids and they were doing studies at ucla and it was a lot of really cool like research happening right you know? right right but that was a risk too like I, imagine telling your family i'm leaving my government job with ucla to go study take a <laughs> cut, take yeah a they're gonna look at you wild and go research with weed stuff so and back in that day it wasn't that common you know yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was still uh, well, kinda, like a, a category one or like it wasn't like federals could still come at you just randomly, yeah. right? Like you didn't have, let's say, you couldn't just get a license or a permit yeah. and be covered. Yeah. At any given moment, you could be raided or something like that. Yeah. Like, and I've been through that too. Like I've, I've been through a raid before and everything. So even though you're licensed and yeah. you have permits with the yeah. city, you do everything legit. But federally, because certain things, like you, yeah. the yeah. federal government has set it at a standard where you can't even research it at a proper level. To yeah. be able to see the benefits or the there's cons. Very, of it. very few people. I mean, now they give a few licenses, but there's very few research going on in the U.S. So now we're starting to see a lot of other countries that are getting ahead faster, right? Spain, Israel, China, Netherlands, yeah. and they're, they're actually going into the hospitals. It's and kind of Israel sad. has hospitals that have like vaporizers. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Vapes. That's in Israel. Yeah. They stepping up, and if you really think about it. Yeah. So instead of I think it's crazy, the like opiates, CBD you know, wise, how. Especially the fucking government, how they don't support it, bro. Like, 
I've seen cases where kids have crazy seizures and CBD treats it. Yeah. And the government's still like, nah, right? it's illegal. Like, bro, whatever helps the motherfucker, you need to dose that motherfucker. You know what I mean? Yeah. If you could do that with yeah. chemo, why not do it with CBD? Yeah. Bro, don't you know what I mean? Start on that. Yeah, <laughs> I, I had one time when I came to India. I came back, I moved back, and I tried to start a small business. So I was managing a small like delivery service under somebody else's license. Right, right. And so um, one of my patients was actually in India, and I couldn't. There was no legal way, way for me to treat her, right? And so I ended up figuring out that if I gave it to her for free, then it wasn't actually. It was like a gift, you know. Oh yeah. And so yeah, I started treating her. this lady, and she had. She was actually married to a cop, to a police officer from India. And so there, he's the one that's supposed to be arresting me. Yeah. <laughs> and, and he's thanking you. And it, it was just so crazy because th- this lady had uh, stage four lung cancer. Ooh, that's and deep. They, she had already lost 50 pounds. She had gone from 130 pounds to about 80 pounds. And we started giving her small doses. Like she was probably barely even feeling it, you know, like five mm-hmm. milligrams at a time or something. And it was we'd give her both THC and CBD, and she ended up gaining 50 pounds back to her normal weight. And and so they they had given her two to six weeks to live. She ended up living about 16 months. Damn. Yeah. So, so everybody was just kind of and even her doctor came and visited blown. her like a year later. Like this lady was supposed to pass away a year ago, and she but because she was in hospice already, they they didn't do any studies. Like she's supposed to just she was done, you know. Dang, bro. I think, Doctors are yeah, kind of they sleeping on point. it, bro. They sleeping on it. Yeah. That's and crazy. so that's where we kind of step in. And, like, we, we're trying to go okay. in and educate these patients. Because, like, one by one, you got to go try to figure this out, you know? CBD is huge, bro. Yeah. Yeah, like, it, it's kind of crazy because it doesn't... When the word miracle comes around in CBD, they go and match and match, bro. Because motherfuckers who don't even know what CBD or, like, THC or weed is, they fuck with that oil the lotion or whatever they're like oh my god it's a miracle like nah bro we've yeah. been telling you this for years you just didn't want to listen you know what right? i mean it's just yeah it works it just works for so many things that i've, I've found I, I saw somebody who had a, like untreatable skin cancer that was growing on on the side of their head and it shrunk down and i had pictures you know he was showing me like two weeks later wait and they had like, what untreatable, uh, skin cancer and it went away kind of yeah damn Start, and imagine it what it did from the get go. It would start scarring up, right? And it starts shrinking. And we're like, oh man. Yeah. And yeah. Well, and so you, you can imagine once you start actually putting this into research and universities and everything, it's going to yeah. move so fast. And th- back then, Funded. we just had THC. Yeah. Then we started with CBD. Then when you really look at it, both of those are actually made when you heat the plant up. Before you heat it, they're both THC acid and CBD acid, <laughs> which is actually a different medication. And so they have different properties because mm-hmm. it's a little bit different. Talk about so it. Yeah. Now we got you gotta four. teach niggas now we got like me because I only ones. know about the THC. <laughs> you said there's like 22 or how? Like, could you can make it into like a tea if you boil it in like certain properties? You can make it so. Yeah. What what kind of things can you do with it? Like well, different the, medications. Like the, they found even more now. So there's THCB, mm-hmm. there's CBG, there's CBN. So there's just all these different molecules now that we're going to be studying for the next. De- couple decades probably right and figuring right, out right. what they're actually targeted for right like, which one's the best for what you know for what? but so far you know you look at THC and CBD and they work for so many things so it's yep. like yeah they work for almost everything bro it just sucks that we have to do even AIDS no HIV we had it actually the first time I made a medicine with all four of those compounds was with the organization that was treating people with AIDS yeah yeah I, I've heard shit about that even magic I heard Magic talk about that oh, type really? of shit that mm, he man, was man. using TH and wow. CBD. I, it gets deep, bro. And the know know trying to, is it still it's category one? No. I don't, CBD? I think so. I'm not even sure. Like, it's like, because the federal government, like, they're not allowing, like, certain funding and certain things like that. Yeah. yeah. I've seen it in Circle K. I, I hope like they the, do, like, at state levels. The pe- state nah, levels CBD is legal no, as fuck. The, the government the stopped, the government oh, stopped rating THC. pretty much. The federal government stopped rating THC or CBD when, when Obama was in there. They kind of started those rules where they were stopped doing Ironically, rates. Obama. <laughs> yeah. well, he, he confesses some in books and you stuff. You know, he used to smoke, bro. I mean. So I, on, I, yeah. and I hit the little TAC and it was over. Uh, <laughs> so you so you graduated from Stanford yeah. and then you invested in CBD and well I had that delivery service going down here and then when all the regulations kicked in it was just so expensive to keep right. going on the THC. Because I heard it's like 
over ten thousand though. Just to apply, it's like it, at first it was like twenty thousand dollars for a license. That's crazy. But it just and fuck, then you get bro. into the real estate. You zone something. You know, you got a building and you zone it. Now it's in the cannabis zone. Now it's worth three times more. Yeah. You know? So the it's, prices get a little crazy. Yeah, people don't even think about yeah. that until they actually jump in that fucking field. Yeah. You got to know what you're doing with it. And a lot of people lost a lot of money going into that yeah. because the market just changes so fast, too. So, Before, like, the distillate that we used to make used to go for, like, $15,000 a liter. Right now, it's, like, 3000 Oh, shit. So first? everybody who was ramping up to make distillate, you know, like, lost a lot of money. And that's most people, actually, if you think it. Was about it was a lot. It was a lot. But, you know, people were adjusting. But you also, you started making, like, those sprays and lotions yeah though. so I, I started to when i when those regulations came in i started focusing more on cbd because i could still keep it i just saw it, thc was getting so expensive too at the time right. when it first legalized if you remember so i was like we need to get medicine that's uh, available for like people where we're from you know right, farm right. workers the essential workers pretty much that everybody you know is trying to protect during the pandemic it's like we were thinking about that and just seeing how do we get this available to those people and actually and build that communication too because a lot of people mm. back in the day even in like the in the mexican culture back here people weren't really open to that you know yeah, and especially you so people, mexican culture they think they think that shit is the real deal drug killer right but, there but if you remember a lot of our grandmothers back there made the cannabis alcohol right they used to soak it in the alcohol but why do they hate on it so much because it smoked uh, and when they use it, and so, but that's what we're taking back to them. We're making the can, uh, spray, massage oil, and it's like, it's just like your grandma used to make, you know? Bro, my grandma didn't care about nothing but weed. She's like, you better not touch that shit. Yeah. To me, I mean, I'm going to be real with you. It's not even a fair comparison, weed versus alcohol, bro. Because to me, alcohol is the number one, like, you know, yeah. drug no, in the world, yeah. bro. It come next is probably pharmaceuticals, like pills and shit. Mm. Yeah. But yeah, bro, I, it's not even close. No, nah, if but, you I mean, smoke it, it just, sorry, if you it, smoke it, it's it's taboo. But if you eat it as a cookie, or if you rub it on your skin like a lotion, it's like oh, it's just like eucalyptus. It's just like any kind of other herb or kind yeah, of plant. Yeah, but still, bro, when people drink, they can drink whenever the fuck they want. The Why tea? can't you smoke? Just like a cigarette. Yeah, I think it just like depends on the person too. Yeah, people. exactly. That's true. Yeah. But I think most people aren't educated on it. That's enough. True. Talking, you know what I mean? Because well, even if you, before, like I said before, without the regulations, you took a brownie, you didn't know what was in it. It was nah, like we it could be ten, it could, <laughs> could be fifty, you know, like. And now at least you, you have the dosage now, hours. you know. So now people are at least able to dose it right. Somebody's able to say, "Hey, this is going to be yeah, two milligrams." See, That's yeah. right. This is going to be fine. Or eat yeah. this much of it. You know what I mean? Exactly. Yeah. So it's like when we had it all on the black market, that's kind of what, what my case always was. And even mm. coming to India, I started talking about that because that's actually how I started to go into council meetings to try to mm. convince them like, hey, you yep. need a legal way for us to be able to treat these people because there's a lot of them in your city and they're veterans. They're, you know, the wives of your workers. Like they're... To be they're 100 with you, that's why I fuck with shops because when you go to a, a shop, they have everything on paper. This, 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 and this. You're getting this and this and this. And yeah. I feel like that's how it should be. Like, most yeah. people don't like it because a lot of people are old school. They're like, I want to touch my shit and taste my shit. Like, nah, motherfucker. You need to know what you're taking, what you're eating, and all that. Yeah. What your mm -hmm. intake is. Absolutely. And if it's approved, bro, because... Nah, the, the pesticides would, like, scare me the most about the street stuff. But think about it. When did we know about pesticides? Wait, not until you. people and, like him and went through Stanford, promoted. got a exactly, chemistry degree. Bro, it was think about before that, the organic method, you know, and it was probably getting sprayed, like, up and down. Think yeah. about before that, though. Before yeah. you went to Stanford, how much pesticides motherfuckers didn't even know what they was dealing with. You know what I mean? But, like, yeah. But now we have people... Because you used to test stuff. Like, like people would send you... a Because yeah. the company that you work for, people would send you some some stuff, and then you would test it, see what it's... Like, how it could help Especially them. carts. Yeah. And then you, they would send it back. Oh, man. Carts yeah, are bad. Carts are could you bad imagine pesticides, Nowadays, bro. like, people buying it on that's the black market scary, in the bro. streets, like, lay stuff or, like, trying to, you know... That's like, 50... Yeah, that's 50 to 70 percent, bro. If no, motherfuckers that's, that's getting horrible, off the bro. street, and that's scary, bro. Because that, that is that's very scary. With what's I mean, going on nowadays, fentanyl and stuff. Nowadays, you're inhaling no. it straight into your lungs. So, uh, <laughs> so how did you be? How did what made you want to become mayor? Oh well, well I was started going to those council meetings, right? And actually, before I started going to the council meetings, I used to I was working out in LA for a while, 
Mm-hmm. And when I was out in LA, I remember that that's when the the Mike Brown protest started up. Yep. Oh, and the yep. Black Lives Matter movement Bro. started. And there was a case out in in LA. Tell it was em. actually Ezel Ford, who had gotten shot in the back at the sa- around the same time as Mike Brown, and so um, the LAPD wouldn't release the the autopsy, and it was months. They were taking right, months, right, right, and right. so they ended up going uh, protesting for Ezel Ford. Ooh. And so I, I I was watching it on TV, and when I was in India, I, I used to drive a lowrider. I used to dress like khaki <laughs> shoe, like whatever. Right? I used to, but I said low. We'll find a picture. Right. Right. Duh. But I used to get pulled get over all the time, high. man. I used to get pulled over all the time and mess in LA? with it. Everywhere. Indio, La Quinta, Stanford, like it was at what? Oh, 86 the description. Caddy, a light blue on 16 yeah. inch Dayton's. Oh, for real? Yeah. Oh, you was doing it. Yeah. Yes, bro. It was nice. It was man, what's your favorite classic car if we don't get into it? Oh, I do like the like the 79 Cadillacs are nice. Ooh. I like those. Damn, that's the you that's some Cadillac. They used to pull up to the little drive-through movie theaters. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. I like mm-hmm. the Impalas, the ones with the little switches. Yeah. The Dre ones. Yeah. Ooh. Nice. What you like, Kyle? See, I keep it I keep it classic with the muscle cars, Dark. I have to keep it like you that. You would. Hey, right. Paul. You think you Paul we go, Walker? We're going You're not fast, Paul bro. Walker, bro. It said this three Paul times. Paul Walker, Dark. <laughs> Nicholas Cage in that movie. Okay. He's <laughs> jumping shit with my 69 Mustang. <laughs> Uh, that's what's but, up, so, man. So we were out there doing. I went out to that first protest. And I ended up going to jail, like for nothing. Yeah, for nothing. The cops just came up. That's how it usually goes down. Everybody got like cornered in, and it was mm-hmm. crazy because when we were marching, we were just marching through, right? And we even had cones and everything. Like this was a pretty organized, event. right, right. And yep. so uh, there was helicopter news was there and everything. And then once we started getting cornered, all the helicopters were gone. No news there. Nobody it was dark, you know. Okay. And they ended up, and we was there for like an hour, and buses came in, took us into jail. No charge. I mean, we didn't. Were you scared? Not really. I don't know. Not really. I didn't think, I think it was going to be too bad, but right. we went to jail for like about 24 hours, mm. got out, and then I started figuring out wh- what I was going to do. Like, I, I was in debt. I was so mad that I even went to jail. I had to spend a day in jail. Like, we, yep. I got sick there. They they had us there, like 40 dudes in a cell with no soap. They didn't give us no soap, nothing. So everybody they got They didn't sick. want you to drop it. And I was like, damn. <laughs> so we went to, we, we ended up, I ended up uh, figuring out where to go to actually make a complaint, you know? And so I went to the police commission and I was, I started talking about like well, what happened. And they didn't really seem to care at all. They didn't even look at me, you know? They were just like, all right, go sit down. Right, right, right. And, and then that's when I saw the people from Black Lives Matter that were there and they were talking about all these other cases that had happened. It were like, you know, young mothers have been killed and like all this really horrible stuff, yeah, right? Yeah, crazy shit. And so I just decided, you know, I just felt it, I needed to help them. You know, like we, we needed to be on the same team here. Right, right, Because we were right. all like pushing for the same thing. So mm-hmm. I started working with them and helping. Like we, we were working with families who were going through these kinds of things with the police. Mm. And we would just help them read through their reports and see like what what sounded wrong, right? What was missing? Like I, I remember one case I, I have, I, I was on reading the, pa- the, the documents and it said in in the paper itself said there's 20 minutes of footage missing from the jail cell where supposedly mm-hmm. somebody committed suicide, right? Dude, and yes. Like, How are you gonna write that off? How are you just gonna write that off, right? And not investigate that. And so we started going and talking about that. Eventually, we had, you know, the news was there, the LA LA Times was there. We ended up coming out front page of the LA Times and just getting that attention so that more people, when stuff like that happened, knew that they could come to us, you know? Right, right, and right. And so they had somebody to actually advocate for them. And even though we weren't getting justice, like. On the uh, on the police committee, they didn't, a lot, a lot of, they didn't seem like they cared, right? They were still mm-hmm. signing off on it, but at least we knew the community was getting awareness, you know? So, so to interrupt so real that, quick, yeah. so I remember you telling me all this stuff, we, we'd be in contact a lot, and so you would be going to city council um, meetings, and they would just be total disrespect, like you would have this stuff recorded, like you do now, and... So they wouldn't even look at you guys. They would just kind of like, yeah, whatever. Like, as you guys would come up, make complaints like, hey, where's the 20 minutes where this lady just died? What was her name? Remember? That was Waukesha Wilson. Waukesha Wilson. Oh, yeah. shit. That was back then? Yeah. Yeah, that's Damn, when he started back that. in L.A. Like, going back and forth from Stanford, L.A. What was that, like, 16? Something like that. I think, I think it was, it was 14, a before actually. that. 14? 14? Yeah, I think it was before that. So he was going 14, back and forth 14. with these marches and BLM. Before BLM was BLM. And just... Getting out there like, hey, there's actual people who are being, like, killed and all of a sudden 20 minutes of footage is being taken off. Like, come on. doesn't yeah. matter what race or color you are. That that shouldn't be happening. That's not right. Like, what's up? 
And so he was going out and going to these city council meetings and none of these people were doing nothing about it. And I remember him showing these videos and it was just, it was just total disrespect to Actually, bro, up. now that you bring that up, I do remember you doing all that, bro. You were used to message me during that. I, I do. Dog, yeah. you just, yeah. him saying that right now just went like, ding, you know what I mean? Yeah. Bro, I didn't, hey. Yeah. Bro, I, I give you mad respect <laughs> for that, bro. Real talk, show, dog. Show. Because if, I mean, bro, if you're not black and let's say like you, you're Mexican, Kyle's white, and let's say if, even if you're yellow and you stand up for a whole different race for the right cause, you just earn my respect, bro. That's just what it is, bro. Mm -hmm. yep. And like I said, uh, I, I remember that shit now that he just said that right now. Yeah. Like, fuck, you just gave me tingles thinking about it. <laughs> I remember one of the, one of the most... The one of the memories, one of the best memories I had was when there was a bunch of, it was like the the mothers and the families of all these people that have been killed, right? Protesting. And then the cops showed up to the protest, kind of like, and it looked like it was going to be like a kind of face-off type of thing. And you just see these brown berets, which are all Latino organizers, line up in front of all the black people yep. and get in between the police and the black people. See, people. that's and, what it is, bro. And you could feel it. Like, everybody was like, oh, man, this is different. That's when it's getting... Yeah. Bro, the craziest shit about the Black Lives Matter protest when the George Floyd popped off was... It was more white people than black people, bro. It was everybody. It was yeah, it was so everybody. And, and that's what people ignored. Like, bro... Fuck the people were like fuck color dog. We just gonna stand together. When you see people that aren't black that are standing up for black or that aren't Mexican that are standing up for Mexicans, it doesn't matter what it is. Like yeah. that shit. That's just some real shit, bro. That that like that's well, real. Like when you watch, it, it was just such a. I think it was just such a gruesome video that anybody who watched it was bro. angered. You know, like when you watch somebody like that get suffocated for minutes. With a knee on his neck and pleading for the life, you know. And like, especially imagine that's your brother, your yeah, yeah, your no. dad, your grandpa. I think, I think that one really hit home for a lot of people. Because, but imagine if you yeah. don't have that footage, like, so, and, yeah, how many people? And that's like that's the that scary part, bro. Because I mean, I hate to put you on blast, but when were you born? Mexico, Mexicali. In nineteen? No, I mean, no, oh, what year? Like nineteen sixty. Nineteen ninety. Yeah, see, I'm ninety one. Right. You're ninety, right? Ninety. Think about it, bro. Let's go to the before the night. There's no cameras, bro. You already know what I was thinking. Mm, There's know. no cameras, no evidence. Motherfuckers are getting away with murder, bro. Yeah. Nowadays, nowadays they got cameras and people are shocked. It's like, bro, us growing up, we were shocked because there was no cameras. But you shouldn't be shocked nowadays because you're actually seeing it. Yeah, it's just it's on camera now. There should be like, more like we need to react. You know what I mean? Because our days, it was like uh, you could be wrong. Nowadays, it ain't no. Uh, it's oh yeah, it's real. You know yeah. what I mean? And it's not about what race you are because it happens to every race. I it happens the sky doesn't lie. It doesn't matter how old you are because it happens to every age. You know what I mean, bro? And yeah. like. I, I love the camera. I ain't gonna lie. People say the camera snitching and shit, but I love the camera, dog, because it reveals the real motherfuckers. You know what That's I mean? Right. Fuck that bullshit of if and possibly this and that. Because think about slavery, bro. And people still get off with the video all hey. the time. That's oh. what they're like. <laughs> yeah, right? that's the crazier part. Yeah. <laughs> but think about it. Imagine they had actual videos of when slavery was going down. Oh, man. Ooh. I, I've been reading this. There's a book I got. It's uh, Malcolm X on Afro-American history. And he starts going into... You know, a lot of times people talk about everybody who died on the slave ships here, right? Right. And he said, just as many people used to die when they got here because they would have to break them in as slaves. Oh, God. And I was like, man, I never even heard yeah. about that, you know? And it's like, well, yeah, you can't just put somebody from civilization into the field. Like, they had to break them in. And it was like a brutal process, you know? It's like that. Like, oh, uh, man. They had a movie, yeah. 12 Years a Slave. Oh, that's right. Because he wasn't a slave in the beginning. He was like a... He used to play an instrument or some shit. Mm -hmm. Some like car going off. <laughs> but yeah, he used to play an instrument. So he wasn't a slave and he had to like break into that whole... Bro, that movie's powerful as yeah. fuck. But it's just like... I was going to ask you. So you ran with... What was the whole campaign for you and Wayne? So it was... So we started talking about, after we started talking about cannabis, like we started talking about other issues, right? Because I just felt like there was a disconnect and there was so, so much going on and there wasn't really much conversation there, right? It was just right, like, right, right. whatever's on the, or whatever's on the agenda, just get through it and, and go. 
Yep. And so we started talking about housing, right? Housing was a big issue for people. So we started talking about housing. We started talking that about that huge. sanctuary city stuff. Like they wouldn't hear that on the sanctuary city. What so exactly is sanctuary city? Sanctuary city is when they were saying back in the days that the city wasn't going to send like the, let's say if you went to jail for your taillight was out, right? And you end up getting in trouble with the police. Does that get, if you don't have documents, does that get shared with ICE? And so sanctuary city would say, we were not going to share that with ICE. We're not going to report it was a small crime, you know? We're not going to report that, even though we know that you don't have your documents. So it was that kind of thing. And so we started talking about that and, like, housing issues. And it just didn't seem like there was, there wasn't really a conversation. You know? right. And then to me, coming in, yeah, I, I know that, you know, like, my English is good, right? Right. And I'm studying, like, what I'm bringing and I'm putting time into it. I'm taking time out of my day. And honestly, some people wouldn't even look at me when I was coming. So it started getting the same vibes as L.A., you know, when people don't. Right, right. There, there, there isn't a concern for you, you know? So I was like, what, what, what are they going to treat my family like that doesn't speak mm. English like me, that isn't educated like me? Are they really, going to take advantage of them. Are Let's they really worried real. about those people, right? So I, I just had a sense that we could just communicate a lot better with our community and make better decisions. Because I wasn't a politician, you know? I was mm-hmm. in cannabis and I was a chemist. And, but even then I was like, we could do it better than this, for sure. Right, oh, yeah, so most definitely. The when people used to tell me like, "Oh, well, like, are you the best?" Pre- I was like, "I'm better than what's there now." So that's where we're gonna take that spot. You know, if you got somebody better, but than you your also bro- you relate to a lot of motherfuckers from India, bro. You, yeah, especially Wayne, dog. Like both of your guys' backgrounds, it's it's real, bro. Yeah. It's not like you just there. You're there for a reason, bro. You you came from the mud. Wayne came from the mud, and you guys are here to like promote real fucking change and to help motherfuckers. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's not like you're here for a check. Nah. And I, a lot of people you know think, what I mean? too, that people do this for the money. It's like we get Dude. about 1100 Take home about $1,100 a month. Exactly. From bro. that job. You know? Bro, so you, you need another job. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> so $1,100 to be the mayor or to be just a city council member where you're expected to put in work every week on your time off away from your normal job or just whenever you have and your family to be able to you have to go check out what does the water look like or what does this look like what does these meetings look like what are some of these things that, and hopefully we can get into that like what does a daily week look like for a city council member yeah. and you're getting 1100 bucks like people think it's about no I, I, it's other, about other cities get more and stuff too so like i think palm springs is like three thousand something like that so say what they, they, yeah they, went, no, hold on hold on three thousand why is it three thousand I think well, so. yeah, it's Palm Springs. Bro, okay. Indio has Yo, they're, the they're largest media, population like and the largest <laughs> land let's, size. Let's be real. It's Palm Springs. Uh, nah. No, it, yeah, we have I, Coachella I, Fest and it State doesn't matter. Palm Springs I, 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 is what, more popping than what Coachella. That mess, what that messes up, though, is that you can't get somebody who works at El Super and say, hey, you can be a council member because they, they're not going to have those flexible schedules, right? Right, right, right. So if you don't pay an actual wage that somebody can live on, you cut out so many people from that opportunity. Yep. Mm-hmm. Right? And you so might have the great ideas. I was I was seeing that too, but I was like, I am I got the privilege that I can have a good paying job yep. and, and I can negotiate a flexible schedule, right? Right, right. So I'm going to do that for my city, you know? Genius. And I was like, okay, that's, we that's can make brilliant. we can make enough on the side. You know, we can we can get a flexible schedule and mm-hmm. because you know, and, and that's kind of like what, what I was taught as a, when I was young is if you work hard enough, you got options. Yep. You negotiate what you want with your boss. You know, you don't got to, like, I remember my mom telling me about uh, cases where somebody would try to, like, raise their voice at her and she'd be like, here's your mop, here's your broom. You do it yourself. Do it yourself. I yep. got plenty of business waiting for me. You that's know? right. If you want to show some respect, then I'll come back. That's right. If not, then we're good. Cheers but to she was always saying, working. like, yeah. that's how you, if you don't have good work ethic, you don't have that ability, right? You, you're stuck where you're at because you, you don't, you're not wanted in all those different places. So. Well, like, his city council, so he started in uh, doing these protests in L.A. And then how'd you realize, like, for me, I, my, my dream has always been, like, I listen to Tupac a lot. Like, how are we going to start fighting in the Middle East if we don't take care of the homeless in our own streets? Yeah. So my heart's always been to be in politics and to help the city, the city, but I don't make the income enough to be able to devote enough time to the city where I can make enough to pay my bills and do things. I got to work harder. But you, on the other hand, were able to figure that out and be able to, like, all right, I'm going to come home. Instead of trying to just protest in L.A., I'm going to work on my city. So how did that start? 
I think, well, it, it was initially, I was moving here just to be with family and start my business here, you know? Mm. And then I just, because I was already involved in, like, city stuff in L.A., I started paying attention more here, right? Mm -hmm. And I think, well, they, they, the organizers there also taught me so much. Like, there were people that were organizers since the 60s out there, you know? So they gave right, us right. reading material. They taught us about different people. This, that's where I learned about Malcolm X, right? Right. And had that comparison where it was like, it wasn't just Martin Luther King in this movement, right? There was other perspectives. There's a hell of people, yeah, bro. there was all these <laughs> other, other people that were through there. So learning from that and just like seeing, and I started reading uh, either autobiographies or biographies of how these organizers. I, just, got I don't mean to, to cut point. you off, bro, but yeah. you're welcome to the barbecue, my nigga. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? You're welcome to the barbecue. But go ahead. Yeah, so I started reading those uh, autobiographies and biographies just to see, like, what was their upbringing like and how did they get to be organizers? How did they get to be community workers and what were they focused on that made them get to those levels, right? Right. And I think, that, like, when c coming back to Indio and having all that knowledge, I think really helped me out. And just being able to focus, like, where, just, it's kind of like sharpshooting, you know? Mm. Well, where's the real problem here? Like, this is what you see on the news. This is what you see on the face of things. This is what people are talking about. But, but what, what's what really the, causing it? What are know? the solutions you think, like, I mean, let's be real, bro. One of the biggest problems in the Valley is homeless people. Mm -hmm. what, is the, what is your solution for that? And, and I think... Well, it's a both positive and a negative that we have in India that we have a lot of the resources there, right? Mm -hmm. And there it, it, it drives, you know, we, we know of other cities that have been dropping people off there, right? And, and we're kind of taking a lot of the load for yep. a lot of the valley. But to me, it, it is, it does cause other problems, but it also, for me, it's a sense of pride. Like, we're the ones taking care of yeah, well, everybody's actually taking action, you know, yeah. out here. Because in and Palm Springs, the Palm Desert is pretty bad. So man. he's going to be humble. City Council, he's not going to disrespect other cities. I'll say it. Indio has the Coachella Valley Rescue Mission and Martha's Village right there. Right. Y'all know where it's at? It's right there. Calhoun. What other places in the Coachella Valley can you think of that have a CVRM or a Martha's Village like that? Very few. Like it's Indio. Now, I know in Palm Springs, they have, like, certain setups where, like, homeless can take, like, a shower or go to the bathroom mm. and, and do, like, little things if they would need to do it. Right. Uh, but as far as, like, having an actual mission, Indio, like he said, we have that in our spot. And, and that's a great thing that we have. But at the same time, it kind of drives certain business. My family owns a certain business in that area. And it's, like, the property values go down and we have a lot of unfortunate incidents at that area because people got to do what they got to do. I understand. But at the same time, it's like we would like some help and support from other people in the valley. Yeah. But how do we help that? And I think so, one of the big things is mental mental health. Mental health is a big issue. So we we, we approved. I think it was a, a couple months into my into me getting into the city council, we approved a mental health facility to go next to JFK. We actually got a lot of pushback from that too. Right. But what people didn't realize, people were saying, "Oh, well, you're gonna have all these people walking around." So, you know, like, this is for us. Like, you, you know I mean, how much percentage of people are having issues. And yeah. if we don't treat them, then they're going to end up on the street. Right? They're already walking and around. create those other right, problems. Right, right, And also, if you really think about Ooh. it, right now, those same people are going to JFK, not getting services, and then getting let out. On oh, God. So it's like, <laughs> That's you, you either got the option of it just no gets services. Worse. They go on JFK, don't get help, come back out, or you actually get them out. And, and we had a lot of pushback on that. It was, it was on both sides, right? It was good and bad. And we ended up having a think, unanimous decision. All the city council said, yes, we need it. I think that's one of the good things about Martha's and the rescue missions. They have a lot of people that came from the programs. They hire their own people, right? When they have a successful person come out of there, they offer them work. And yeah. then they know the struggle and they can help somebody through the struggle better, right. right? So that's what I see a lot when I go there. Like a lot of the workers are actually people who benefited from those programs. Yeah, Martha's Village is to top notch, bro. Man, they do a lot of good work. They, you see, they have a new medical facility now. Fair. So all they do? When people come out of JFK from the emergency room um, and they don't have anywhere to go, right? Or if they go home, they're not going to have the right uh, care there. So they have a nurse full time that'll take care of like eight rooms or something like that. And they have like eight, kind of like a hospital sitting room. Oh, that's pretty dope. It's on the second. But yeah, what about the youth, man? How do you, I heard y'all building parks and shit. Right, right now we're actually, yeah, we got a grant, $8.5 million for a sports park in, on Ooh, Jackson. On in Jackson. Jackson and 45. Perfect Come spot. on. It is. Perfect the, fucking North spot. Indio, the real North Indio. Soccer field. I mean, you say what and, you want. 
<laughs> the the and we're also working with the desert rec right now. we're actually working on on an agreement and you know nothing's uh, solidified there but we're trying to figure out how do we get uh de is it would it be better for desert rec to take care of our parks because if you notice like their parks are maintained like real well and, and right. also we can also have them organize sports and events at all these parks right oh that'd be possible so we're thinking we have such a small staff at our city do we really want to take that on you know is it better to just contract it out with desert rec i like it and so mm. we're trying to figure that out right now. When the See, that's what we need motherfuckers like you, dog. <laughs> See, so, you know so the deal. would it be basically like a rec center in North India? Like kind of like one that's in, in uh, by the high school? Uh, it, it would actually be... Like a step down? Maybe? That's like a YMCA, It would be more bro. than one of our parks. Like they, they we're actually looking at having them organize most of our parks throughout the city. Dude, mm. that'd be use amazing. Them. Use Like Miles Park would be the Desert Rex. They right? specialize in that. Why not use oh, yeah. somebody Oh, yeah. Miles who's... Park would be a perfect Bro, spot. I'm trying to get a skate park. Skate park and dog Renovate park and Miles that? Park. I mean, For sure. Skate park. We already set up the soccer goals. I don't know if you see that. Y'all yeah. don't want to see me on the soccer field. No, I'm just kidding. Put me on that <laughs> digital <laughs> soccer, FIFA. That's what's <laughs> up, bro. Skate parks is where it, that's a... That's I've, a good I've been fighting start, for bro. funding for a skate park. Basketball, so you definitely need basketball courts. You know, yeah, I mean? they have them there, but they're pretty old, so we need to renew them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Oscar's like, I used to dunk on him back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. How tall are you? Six two. You're six two, goddamn. <laughs> I thought you were six one. Nice. <laughs> That's what's up. Yeah. So what else y'all uh, doing in India coming up? Uh, we're working a lot on downtown. You know, I think downtown people have been trying to bring that back for like thirty years. You know, right. so we're, we're putting a lot of work into that. Actually, COD is expanding there too, so they're well, gonna have two you, new buildings coming up. What do you mean, like up. you're working on it? Like we're, we're just trying to promote it. Like Yellow Mart area. Yellow Mart area uh -huh. too. I and mean, we had the food trucks there for a while going. They just moved. Oh, out. that was you guys. No, no, no. There was uh, somebody leasing it out from us, right? Yeah, our old studio was, was right there, bro. Oh, nice. Remember, Kyle? Oh, yeah. We yeah, used to see yeah. a little food truck. That shit was yeah, popping, bro. Yeah, that was cool, man. That was cool. Bro, I, I promise you, bro. Yeah, bro. Yeah. I promise you. That was... Shout out to whoever's doing that, bro. Eric. That was... Eric Basarid. Yeah? It was cool, Ooh, man. We, we hey. hadn't seen that many people in downtown in a long time, so... Yeah, they had some fire tacos. Yeah, I don't know what truck movie. I went to, but there you go. Shout out to you. But right now, we just had somebody else come in, and they took uh, across the street from that building. There's three three spots there where the old police station used to be at. Like, it was a little uh, building there that they used to use. But those three are now going to be three different restaurants. Ooh, so it's going to be a suit. Okay. I think it's a, 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 a grill, then a sushi place, and a, maybe an Italian restaurant. They're not sure on the last one yet. But somebody's bought that out. They're going to be renovating that. We put some... It's our buildings. It's city-owned land. So we put some money into it, too, to help renovate right, it a little right, bit. Right. And then we, ha we have a lot of people interested in, in some of those. And I think that's another thing that we're doing better now is negotiating better and just attracting people uh, better, you know? Because we, we are the fast... One of the fast... Gro we're fast growing in the, in the what valley. What if somebody sure. wants to do, like, a food truck? Do they, like, hit you guys up? Or do they, they like... come to our city. Come to City Hall. And they, they'll give you the permits there. You know, they'll let you know what you got to do there. So, so what's up with, I love seeing these entrepreneurs on the corners selling, like, all this fruit and all kind of tacos, everything. Like, how does somebody, if they just want to do something like that, how do they maybe go about doing, like, city council? Like, how do so, they... well, that was actually an issue for a little while because we had a lot of people coming through and, and posting up in front of our businesses, right? And right. so our business is paying rent, and they're paying their insurance, and this yeah. and that. And there's people coming from, you know, L.A. area getting dropped off and making money right in front of their spot selling the same stuff, yeah, right? Uh -huh. But actually, we had some state laws that could, that didn't didn't allow us to even enforce anything there. So we we actually passed an ordinance there and said, you know, we, we put more regulations on it. Like, you have to have your business license. You have to have your health code, you know, all this stuff. Mm -hmm. And pretty much to help protect those businesses from having their revenue i mean it's it just not fair right if yeah yeah, yeah i feel it all those taxes and uh rent costs and everything yep. so we're like nah we got to help That's them good, out and make sure that we can keep that concentrated in other areas where our businesses aren't there right yeah because if you have a mexican restaurant on the corner and you have some dude pulling up making tacos right there it's like hey, dude man. you're not paying all that stuff you yeah. just mentioned that's so we so you guys, you guys so, so the, the city <laughs> but, so the but city kind of made a deal though like you stepped are, up I and mean, said if you got private land you could do whatever you, like you could sell it there right so that's what we're trying to say like you can't you just can't do it on on like the sidewalk right, right in front of another business if you have your own spot your own land like sure do it you just gotta have your license and get, right, go through all right. the codes right but if people are interested they, they should go to city hall and 
figured that out there. We also have the Indio Chamber there right right around this corner from City Hall, and they do a lot of small business help as well. Nice. What's up, man? CVEP dot com. They do some help out here as well. So hey, like, speaking of small oh, business, go. man, like I hope we can get into this. All right, let's talk about the Coachella Fest. Mm-hmm. What is because let's talk about Indio, bro. Because how does Indio benefit, or even Coachella? How do they benefit from the Coachella Fest? Yeah. So Indio. So before. A couple of years ago, we, we actually didn't, off of ticket sales, we wouldn't really get anything, right? It was right. more just they were generating the business here. They were bringing people here, mm. and people were kind of happy with that, that it was bringing business. Uh, the restaurants were busier for those couple of weeks, right? And then uh, a, a councilman that came before me, his name was Sam Torres, he started seeing in other cities, you know, Indian Wells, when, when they do their... The tennis tournament, the city gets 10% of the ticket sales. Right, right, right. And I'm not sure how much they, they invested into the stadium as well, right? But he's just saying, like, we need to start negotiating that. And For so us. he started saying we should get at least, you know, 2 3% from the ticket sales. Mm-hmm. And there was actually, like, a lot of news stories on that saying that, oh, what if they leave, right? If we're charging too much, they're going to leave this and that. I don't know how he got it passed, but he got it through. He got that deal through. And we had started getting, I think it started at $5 per ticket. And it went up with inflation, so I think we're like around seven dollars per ticket, something like that. Mm, and that's so that's a fucking lot. If you think tickets about are it. what three fifty? Yeah, but you gotta think about how many are sold. Bro. Yeah, <laughs> that's so, a lot. Well, it ends yeah, up generating it's about global. But ten percent would be thirty five. It, it'll end up being about two point five million a year. Yeah, get from those revenues, right? Mm-hmm. And so it is a good amount, but I think we. I was trying to say we should still go back to the table and renegotiate. If, yes, because we were right. gonna get a uh, we were gonna give a twenty year extension, and I was like twenty year extension. They they're able to do real estate moves at that point, right? Yep. They oh, they want to keep the same funding. contract for twenty years, mm-hmm. twenty more oh, years, damn, same one that no. we already had, right? That's for like so seventeen beneficial. years before, and that's why I say okay, let's go back to the negotiation table mm-hmm. because there might be things that our residents also not just money, but what what issues do we have that we can solve through these negotiations? Absolutely. Right? And I didn't have any support on that, so we ended up not even going to the negotiation table and just giving them the twenty-year extension. Just Damn, yeah. that made me mad. Cause I remember one time I couldn't even get home, bro. Like I had my driver's license. I said I live on Avenue I remember Fifty. That. Yeah. And they wouldn't even let me home. Bro. <laughs> Avenue Fifty. Avenue Fifty, yeah, right? That's I live right down the street, man. And yeah. they said, "Nope, I'm not gonna let you home." What Bruh, the heck? I used to live in uh, Indian oh. Palms. Oh. <laughs> It used to take us like an hour yeah. to get there, bro. Bro, yeah, that's crazy. So, but so you think they should work on that, like a whole well, I deal? Mean, it's done now, you know. So we can't years, change so, it for twenty years. It's gonna be like that till twenty fifty. Is there is there any negotiation or like a contract extension or anything that comes up within the twenty years? I mean, there's certain things that they gotta meet still, right? There's all these requirements in that contract. And everything, what do you but, think about what do you think about them not like promoting local artists? I think they started promoting some of the artists, right? I know I saw Ocho was there. I think uh, Giselle Wu was on the next lineup. Oh, yeah? yeah. Giselle Wu, hey, we trying to get you on here, you know what I'm saying? She's but, dope. Yeah, she's yeah. dope as fuck, bro. Yeah. But I feel like they should do more for locals, too, bro. Yeah, for sure. Man, that's that's just two is not enough. You know, I think the vendors, the food vendors. Like, oh, my God. Especially Bob. There, shout out right? to Bob. <laughs> 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 I know yeah, some yeah. Bob's, dog. <laughs> hey, El Reaper yeah, chicken. Hey. How to get family. Ah. Imagine, I'm dog. They had El Reaper at Ch- uh, Coachella. That's that's something that I want to negotiate, too, was, like, local vendors, right? We need to get local vendors in there to get that. Yeah? Get them sales going, but. That'd be nice. Why they're not open to it, or is it their... I mean, we didn't even get into the conversation, you yeah, know? bro, that's kind of crazy. Like first come, first serve. Who do you know that knows you? What do you make? I think it My should cousin be, works I think it should there. be only local, it. bro, because think about it, bro. We got Dude, the best food local? in the world. We got Mexican we, we food. We just had tamale festivals, like, bro, <laughs> I mean, right? The tamales were... I ain't gonna talk about that shit because that shit got me fat, bro. That shit. Do you even so think we're like gonna a, have a Coachella? I think so. I mean, so far, I think the plan was, yeah. I think they they first said they were gonna require vaccinations, then they they backed out on that. I think. So. Oh, so you don't I need a vax? Because most 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 uh people have sure. to be. I, I, I don't want to say because I might be. <laughs> yeah, 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 for, yeah wanna, So, I so the tennis gardens, sure. the in, the Indian Wells tennis gardens, was the first major sporting event in the world that was to shut down without mandates or requirements just voluntarily they shut down last year 
because of COVID. But they had their the thing this year. The out here? Yeah, the ten- Indian, right. Indian Wells. So they they already had theirs this year. So for me, I would I hate, I don't like to assume, but I'll, I'll say presume. Based off the evidence of they already had their event this year, I would presume that Coachella Fest and Stagecoach is probably going to come through. They're going to figure out mandates. They're going to be like, they're businessmen. They're going to find a solution. Be like, okay, we had a year to figure this out. If you can't figure this out, you're fired. Find yeah. somebody who well, can think, figure out how we can make our money. And too, though, on like the the county health people, right? Because it depends on if the numbers go up and down, like things change. So it's like, I don't want to assume too much. But so far, I think the plan is that it's going to happen. Because yeah, it's in April, right? So, I mean, that's usually yeah. after like flu season and the cold. So I'm hoping like, Bro, I, I, don't don't, know. I pray Coachella happens, dog, because it's going to be my, for one, it's going to be my first Coachella, man. Oh, nice. What? Yeah, and y'all better give me a motherfucking media pass, <laughs> Oscar. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Shit. when I got to Stanford, I was definitely behind, you know? Because you were? a lot of these people, they're coming from private schools, they got the new laptops, and, and, and probably smaller classes, right? So a lot of them, I talked to them, and they said they got like 12 people in their class. So what we had like forty people in our class, right? Wait, wait, they had twelves. There was people with like really small class, and it's about a lot of these private schools, right? Because they, there's not that many people in there, so they mm. pay the price to have smaller classrooms. Wait, wait, in high school they only had twelve kids in a class. That's crazy, bro. Those money. that's like one two rows, bro. bro. <laughs> so you can imagine how much extra care you get from mm. the teacher, right? When you only got twelve kids, to teach. especially if you're fucking smart as shit. Yeah. So that's when I started realizing, that. and I I knew I was behind already, and so I just had to start studying again. Like you know, Monday through Friday, it was all day, all night. Like it, I, would, I would take breaks to go eat and go to the gym, and most of the time we're just studying. And once it got to Friday night, I'd go out with my friends, you know, weekend. Right. But even the weekends, I'll probably study one or two days out the weekends. And just keep going. And eventually, I got uh, by the time, uh, by the like second quarter, I was getting like 90s, 100 percent in my chemistry classes and stuff. So I was like, okay. And we kind of set the tone, you know, <laughs> because people saw me too coming down, right, right, right. you know, with the low rider, like that's, like, <laughs> that's right. I was just dressing different, and, and people kind of low ride. <laughs> and I actually, had people try to convince me that like chem- I couldn't do chemistry there because it was that was your subject, hard. your favorite subject. Yeah. I hated chemistry. Yeah. Bro. <laughs> Weren't you the, the first Shout out to person? Mr. Hildebrand. <laughs> no, nah, Mr. Riven is. You were the first oh, yeah. person to pass the AP chemistry test at yeah, New High School history. Yeah. For real? I think so. Oh, yeah. shit. Bro, they be thinking this shit regular right bro, here, bro. Like, I gotta... <laughs> but bro, you're like a you're like a LeBron of <laughs> India. <laughs> bro. In academics. Yeah, like... you know, there's not gonna be another on-score bro. tease, bro. Well, dang, well, after I got in, because I think I was the first first one that at least from anybody i can remember would had gone to stanford but after right. i got in you started seeing more people get in yeah and actually the guy that, that read my application was from coachella oh and for real he only worked there for one year so i was like Blessed. just so lucky <laughs> damn yeah so i was like dang oh yeah i was like i remember praying so hard damn. <laughs> i was like i'm gonna pray every day that was an alley lined but, up and actually i, I didn't want to apply to stanford because i knew i couldn't pay for it Right, and so that's a top-notch like, school. Why am I even gonna apply? You know, it's fifty thousand dollars a year, two hundred thousand dollars all makes you know, yeah, thirty thousand dollars a year. So like, it just doesn't make sense. So the scholarship, you didn't have to pay for none of it, huh? Well, well, I applied because my my teacher told me we got some waivers, so you could apply for free, and just to see if you get in. I was like, I'm not going. He said, you could see if you get in, and you could just show people that somebody from India can get into Stanford. And I was, that's a good point. So I applied right, right. and I got the acceptance. And I remember getting my mom. And we were like, "Nice." <laughs> we just like put it away. <laughs> Get the tequila. <laughs> nice, but... We kind of like looked at each other like, "Cool," you know. Yeah. And we just put it away, and the guy actually called my counselor's office and he to congratulate me. He said, "Oh, congratulations on getting in." I said, "Thank you." He said, "You coming?" I said, "No, I, I got a scholarship to USC to like cover half my tuition, so I'm gonna go there." And he said. What are you? T- he said, "What are you talking about? Like it's your, it's free." I said, "What's free? He said, Everything's free." <laughs> right. he said, There's a new program where if your parents make under sixty thousand dollars, we Ooh. pay for your tuition, your housing, your food, books. They gave me money for books every quarter. Like oh shit! And so I was just like, and we had like barely anything. You know, yeah, we had right, all our right. bank accounts like pretty low at that moment. So I remember taking off probably. I had a couple thousand dollars in scholarships, local scholarships that I got. So I had like $5,000 in the bank. I just took off with 
you know, bag in my backpack. That's dope. Go. <laughs> they still got yeah. that shit available or what? Yeah, I think it's I think it changed now because uh because of inflation, right? So now I think it's seventy five thousand. If your parents oh. make under seventy five thousand and those cool is they don't look at how much you make until after they accept or deny you. Oh, they won't look at shit. your money. They'll just see what have you done? If they accept you, then they look at your money and, and it's say, both the parents together? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Dang, bro. I didn't really do that, to be honest with you. Yeah. That's and, crazy and they do that at a lot of private universities, actually. So Harvard had the same program at the time going. They, they started at the same time, I think. And so now you start seeing more. It, it opened up. I could tell, like, our year when I got in, because it was the first year that it happened, you could tell there was people more, more people from, like, low-income backgrounds, you know? Right, 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 so I had, right. like, a friend from Ethiopia. I had a friend from Central California. And we were all in the same boat. All right, so... Before we get up out of here, what other plans you got for um, Indio just in general? In general, I think uh, so some of the things that we really heard from the community when we were door knocking, like canvassing, you know, uh, campaigning is that they, the main thing was housing. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people told That's us they were cool. having issues with housing, you know, the, they, the prices were getting too high. Uh, we saw a lot of overcrowding. We went to houses, you know, three, two or three families per, per house. And people saying, you know, my, my kids can't afford to get their own apartment. It's too expensive now. And so we've been trying to look at different opportunities that we can have where even if the city can invest into some land that we could use for affordable housing projects. So I'm looking at a lot of the local, we have local organizations too, Coachella Valley Housing Coalition. They're the ones that redid Campo. And that's Via Hermosa now. And if you look at how they did it, they actually went piece by piece, taking pieces out of Campo and then bringing back those same residents that used to live in Campo and putting them in the brand new apartments. And they're real nice apartments. They're real, they manage right. them really well and everything. So I think looking for different opportunities like that to work with those organizations to, to bring affordable options for like working families. You know, these are all people who work in full time and mm. stuff like that. So one of the things w w when, when they take, they use a lot of money from the federal government or from the state. And so the requirement is usually they can only charge you 30% of your income, no matter what your income is, as long as you're working, they'll charge you 30%. You know, if your income goes up, they'll charge you 30% of that. It's pretty so, fair. Uh, it's pretty fair. And, and usually like what, most people say like it, it, your rent shouldn't be shouldn't be more than thirty percent of your income, right? But when we look at the numbers here in the valley, you see that a lot of people are paying over fifty percent of their income. Yeah. On on their rent, and so we know that's gonna especially that, that, in an apartment. Yeah, and then that means that you're not gonna have money for education. You're not gonna have money for good food. You're not gonna have money to put into your business, right? Clothes, or you're gonna be working shit. working more and like spending less time with your family. So we want to make sure we have those opportunities for. Like again, the essential workers that have been holding it down for us, that have been, you know, building up our city for so long to stay here. Like, I, I don't want them to be uh, replaced just because we can make more money off, right, right. off other people, right? We want to keep them as part of our community. And looking, uh, one of the opportunities I was looking at the other day, I was talking to a, an organization saying, if we could help uh, buy the land, which is like half a million dollars, if we help buy the land, they can build about 50 homes two-story homes, small two-story homes that our residents can buy mm. and they'd be at affordable, at affordable rates, right? So it, it does take some investment from the city, but we have $3.8 million that we're going to have next year that we can invest into these things. So I think that's one of the things that I want to do, start a land trust where we start buying properties that's and being able to donate that to housing to start, try to tackle the housing crisis, primarily for our residents, you know, and try to prioritize Indio residents for that. Because then you start building that wealth, you know, they got ownership now of a right. home, I know you guys were talking about the last time and just being able to free up some of that income to use on their business, their education. And it doesn't all have to be going to rent, right? right and a lot right. of these rents, they're going out of town too. So that's money that's leaving our community when you really think about it. Right. And so we're trying to, uh, that's one of the things. The other thing is I, I think we, there wasn't uh, as much of an effort before in, in communicating with with the residents, right? So there wasn't too much on social media. There wasn't anything in Spanish. So now, like every time we're gonna have a meeting, I'll post it on social media. I'll put like the main points and try to simplify it so people can understand what's going on. Highlight any important things that I think people will be interested in. Mm -hmm. And then also, uh, we never had translation. We never had, so all of our city agendas, you know, the, for the meetings, uh, they had never been translated. So I, it took me about a year to, to get that through uh, through the council and now we have every agenda is translated before it comes out and then we also 
it took me a year to get that point and another year to get tra live translation. So now if somebody's watching on Zoom, they could watch our city council meetings. Just click a button and it'll change to Spanish and you have a live translator. Yeah, they won't feel out of, they won't feel out of the loop, you know what I mean? Yeah. And we know like if you look at our census numbers, we know that like fifty percent of our residents yeah. speak Spanish in the home, right? Yeah. And, and there's just so many residents that it's not their main language. And when you're trying to understand government things, it's even harder, right? Right. So I think it's really important that, it, and it, I think when I brought it up, because I was getting pushback from it, mm. I said, let's look at the numbers. How much does it cost, right? Right. It ended up being $9,000, which is like so small for the city, right? And that allows you to communicate better to half of your residents. Exactly. Like, yes, we're yeah. going to do that. And once we got the number, I was able to convince people to do it, right? But just getting the number was like a controversial, like, we couldn't even get that far, you know? That's crazy. So now we get, and so we're just trying to build all these different places of, of communicating better with our residents, whether it's English or Spanish, mm -hmm. and just building those, uh, that trust in people too, that they can reach out, right? People text me on Instagram with their issues and we'll send right. them to the right place, they'll call me up, and or, you know, find me through a friend or through family, and uh, we'll be able to get them to the right people at the city to get their problems solved and everything. Just... Is it safe to say, like, the future of India is looking pretty bright right now? You know what I mean? Because it's going good. It's, it's growing. We're like, attacking we got a lot of, a lot of problems that people are ignoring. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, I hope so. And I, I think we're growing really fast. And that's it, it's kind of a, it's a good thing financially, but it's also... We, we see what happened in L.A. We saw what happened in Oakland. We saw what happened in San Francisco yeah. with displacement. You know, so I'm trying to see how do we grow responsibly yeah and include our residents and include our businesses so that you know they they get to benefit off of that growth we were not just pushing people out and making room for other people right like mm. I, I think it's really important to to because they're the ones that voted me in too right so i'm representing our <laughs> residents yeah, i'm not yeah. just representing the money from the city yeah <laughs> like our bank account right it's like no it these are the i'm supposed to be speaking for these people right right, right. so if it take if even if it's a little slower and we do it the right way i think it's better right Sometimes. I mean, for the most part, we need more people like you because you're worrying about the bigger problems. A lot of people are looking at the little problems, but you're worrying about the bigger problems because everybody needs a roof, bro. That's just plain and mm -hmm. simple. You know what I mean? And nobody wants to pay two fucking thousand dollars for Crazy, one, bro. two bedroom apartment in the fucking ghetto. Yeah. No. Like, it's just what it is, but you might as well get a house. We, yeah, you know we, what I mean? and we recommend higher now, right? <laughs> yeah, we recommend between 20, 25 percent, maybe thirty percent of your your budget should be on your rent or your mortgage, and then a certain percentage towards your like utility, certain percentage towards your food, things like that, your mm -hmm. debt, your All investments. Right. But like you said, if you're spending fifty percent on your rent and your mortgage, you have no money to save, no money to invest to be able to purchase a house. All right. Like how are you going to save up enough money to make a down payment if you're spending it? like a hamster on the wheel you know just like yeah. uh, medical situation. emergencies that come up too like mm. things get expensive especially you know? medical where it's thousands car of problems dollars. like yeah people need to have that little savings account so besides mm -hmm. besides uh housing what other uh you know plans and solutions you got for indio you and mr wayne we gonna get wayne on the show we'll see you next year, bro. <laughs> yeah wayne has been doing really good too i think he he has a lot of those same skills with like communicating with our with our residents he has a lot of people that reach out to him too for help and so I think uh, we're just listening, you know, we just got our ears open and we try to study our stuff as thoroughly right. as we can. You know, like I said, we, we all, all of us have second jobs Two Wayman works at, at uh, the prison in Calipatria. So mm. he drives out, you know, two hours every day to go to God work, damn, that's comes back, <laughs> studies, goes to the meetings, you know, so we're doing what we can and then just trying to keep trying to keep up with everybody and, and see what the what the new issues are coming. Well, I mean, when COVID hit us. I was a year in, you know, yeah, <laughs> and coming, you know, fresh in politics and, and having to figure all that out and seeing, like, where are we going to put this money when we did get money, right? Like, where's more strategically can we put this? And a lot of it, uh, uh, some of it went to the small businesses, right? So right, we started right. those programs. We did twice that we put half a million dollars, so total about a million dollars into just straight grants for small businesses. Mm -hmm. One of the cool things that happened there is we had uh, some people that were organized that were uh, daycare providers. Right. A lot of them didn't speak English. And they started calling in to the meetings to talk to us and saying that they needed to be included, even though they, they were working out of their homes. Right. They were talking about all the expenses they had to put in mm -hmm. because they had to hire more people or they had to change, you know, more air conditioners, like having the wind doors yeah. open, change the windows out, all these different things. 
and they advocated for themselves. Yeah, and that's kind of what we realized. Like we needed a live translate. I was translating for everybody <laughs> during the meetings. <laughs> oh, Dang. and we're like, this, you know, this ain't right. So it, that kind of helped us out too in that sense, of realizing how much that was necessary for people. Right. Yeah. So that was a really cool thing that came out of that time. Was like uh, to see them getting organized and getting what they needed. You know, and we were able to include them in that program. And there was a lot of child care providers. Right, right. That got those grants and, and were able to make improvements to their homes with that money. That's what's up, man. Yeah. So, I mean, you know we got to do it before we get up out of here. Hot, it? The hot chicken challenge. Shout out to Al Reaper <laughs> Chicken. Let's this is, it. hey, before we y'all try one of the hottest ones, can I get a review? They, I mean, it's so good. I was so very, <laughs> very surprised at how juicy the actual the tender was like it yeah. wasn't just like a deep fry like oh here here's your meal no it was actually like solid of a it ten juicy. what would you give it I give it a solid eight and a half nine Ooh, I like, like that straight like I mean but like I said like we got it ordered it brought it back here yeah so you know it's so five fresh a little higher oh you know what I'm saying like fresh I can see it my like bad nine and a half, we ten. good time we're a little late. <laughs> what, is, what do you give it? I, I think like nine, nine point five. Five. Yeah, bro. You, I Straight see up. your eyes and you ate that. You're like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> what did you like about it? Yeah. The taste or? I mean, yeah, the, it just the the batter is like so crispy, like just perfect, perfect I batter like on the chicken. Nice. I like that. So y'all gonna get a little bite of the. Let's do it. Which one's the hottest one? The Reaper? Mother. I think both of these. Oh, right? no. The Ghost so the Reaper pepper. has to be the hottest one, huh? No. The Reaper is the hottest one that I've seen on that little thing. And then Ghost Pepper is a step under that. I'm not trying it. Go ahead, man. I'll, I'll yeah. try the step go below. Ahead while you guys try it. You're going to try it, now. You're the hottest one? Yeah. Yeah, man. Before we get up out of here and do a little review on the hot ones, uh, shout, shout out to like, Eddie. Uh, shout out Ghost to the pepper. mayor. Shout out to Kyle. Shout out to my camera guy. Uh, hey, shout out to uh, LQ Bike Life, man. I fuck with y'all, bro. That's real positive yeah, you guys got good. going on. It's pretty good. It's pretty good? Oh, you just took a little bite? Yeah. <laughs> I want to I want a real review in a little bit of how this tastes. You guys are making a history. You know that, right? You guys are the first people to try it live no on air. He said, no way. <laughs> So it begins. That's okay. good. Yeah? Ghost pepper's nice, huh? Wait, wait. Ghost pepper? Yeah. Is that the hottest one? No, the Reaper's the hottest one. You tried that one already. Did you huh? try the Reaper? Oh, yeah. He, see, you. Okay. Hey, That's what he's he represented, bro. Though. You know what oh, I mean? <laughs> he represented, <laughs> bro. Kyle, you let you let him down today. <laughs> okay. What you talking about, Willis? So mm-hmm. let me so how, what, let me get a little review. Is it good for one? Is it not just hot? Is it tasty? The ghost pepper is nice, like, bro. Yeah? Check that out. I'm the, not checking it out. The Reaper has like a hot Cheeto taste to it, which is nice. Yeah? Like the a, Reaper is the hottest one? Damn. But they're really uh, flavorful. I'm looking at Kyle right now. He looks <laughs> like he's going They're good because sometimes you just get stuff that's just hot. Bro, did you get the hottest yeah. one? Yeah. He already ate the hottest one. Like, like it phased you. That's good. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> I told you he's jalapenos for breakfast, bro. I'm doing it. That's true, actually. <laughs> and his frosted flakes. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't even need milk. He got the Coca-Cola. Yeah, that's nice. Damn, that's what's up, man. Hey, shout out to El Reaper Chicken. Hey. Let me get this. Hey, hey, we, hey, we appreciate you. We'll put it in the description below. He be doing deals, too, bro. It's not like he be, you know... He be ripping people off and shit. Like some people, be, real? yeah, you know how some people be selling their home food for like fifteen, twenty. <laughs> I see your eyes. He's like, yeah, I know. You. <laughs> it's hot. Hey, y'all got any shout outs before we get up out of here? Give me a second, you first. <laughs> Are you feeling it now? <laughs> no, I just got food in my mouth. Is it hot? <laughs> it's hot. On a okay, scale well, of one to ten, how hot is it? No. <laughs> Kiss my seven. Seven? What about you, Kyle? Bro, do it again. <laughs> <laughs> I did it just to do it. Bro, it's just hot. It's hot? On a scale of one to ten. Put that on your lips, bro. On a scale of one to ten, how hot is it? Bro, that's pretty hot. 
<laughs> bro, it looks like it doesn't even phase you, bro. You're like, whatever. It's like, like styrofoam. He looks like he's going through it. I would say habaneros, like real habaneros, like yeah. that my suegra puts in her frijoles. It's hotter, but that reaper is hot, though, though. So it's a 10? <sighs> no, I give it like probably a 9 on hot- hotness because the habanero Does straight. Does it still taste good, though? Yeah, dude, it's flavor. It's like I said, that's it's what juicy. I worry about. If it's hot and you know has flavor, the chicken oh, isn't dry. That, <laughs> like yeah. the chicken yeah. is juicy. It's not dry. It's, it's nice. Oh, dude, yeah. man. No, dude. I got Let you. me give some shout out before we get up out of here. Then oh, who you got? Man. Yeah, I definitely want to say thank you to our city staff. You know, they're the ones, the ones putting in the hard work on on the ground out there. You know, mm. fixing our streets, fixing our parks, uh, recruiting businesses to come into Indio. And there's so much work that goes on behind the scenes, you know, after, after we make the decisions on the city council. So definitely oh, want to. Yeah, most of Yeah, so definitely want to give a shout out to them. Who else? Who else yeah, you got? I mean, I think our uh, my campaign team, you know, all the people that helped me get to that spot, my family for helping me out. Yeah. Everybody holding me down, making sure I don't go crazy in there. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's a lot of people that, you know, they're very understanding with me, too. You know, when, I, when I'm not able to, you know, go to family functions or when they see me tired and just come in where I, I can't really <laughs> socialize oh, anymore. And everything. Yeah, yeah but, I feel it. Yeah, so definitely shout out to all my friends and family, too, for helping me out. Hey, man, you going to help us get Wayne up in here or what, man? Yeah, you going to come back or what? Yeah. Let's do right, it. I heard you guys are going to get in the booth. <laughs> maybe waving, yeah. <laughs> what about you, Kyle? You got any shout outs? My boy Oscar stepping through. Oh, yeah, yeah. Rolling shout through. Oscar. You know, sharing with the what's going on with the city, helping right. people out, sharing what's going on with the medicine. It doesn't get enough exposure. So right. my mother passed away, stage four breast cancer, and she used marijuana to help like with her process of ending life. Mm-hmm. But as far as being able to maybe cure cancer, do these things, like if that stuff would have been legit and actually research like mm. things that oscar's doing actual legitimate research that stuff could really help people so i'm just excited he's getting out there sharing the message so shout out to him That's you for doing your thing there. episode nine yeah oh hey episode nine cheers man. episode nine yeah uh what is it oh reaper oh yeah man El reaper chicken can i get a review <laughs> can i get a review bro that ghost pepper was it, i could i could take care of that reaper was fire though that was something else he took it like a champ <laughs> bro i don't know oscar is this dude. definitely brown <laughs> he nailed it down today bro bro straight he, up i was looking at him he was like it's hot <laughs> yeah <laughs> and I'm, I'm gonna take some home to my wife see what she can do with it because that, that shit's hot. oh yeah shout out to anna she gonna like that shit yeah. you know what i mean put but, it down uh, watching the girls you guys gonna hit up el reaper in your spare time oh, or what yeah. sure <laughs> dude <laughs> hey shout out to her we're gonna get the link in the description you know what i mean nice. hey Tell them Valley Talk sent you. You're going to get a little bit. <laughs> it might be $2, 3 4 5 You know what I mean? It's something, though. You know what I mean? <laughs> but, uh, yeah, yes, right there, huh? Man, before I get up out of here, shout out to Kyle. I pre- Hey, you can come here whenever you want, bro. Whenever you want. Uh, shout out to my cameraman. Yeah. Shout out to Big Eddie, bro. Hey, we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you, Mayno, and the rest of the team. And shout out to Oscar, bro, man. Like I said, you're a hero, bro. You came from the mud. Big inspiration, dude. You, you're a big inspiration, bro. A lot of people should look up to you, bro. Fuck a rapper. Fuck that bullshit. They should want to be an Oscar Ortiz, bro, because you're a mayor, bro, for one. And you're trying to make change, dog. It's not like you're doing the little shit in the world. You're doing the big things in the world. And I, you got my respect. Salute you. I appreciate you, you man. And we're going to get you back here a few yeah. more times or what? Oh, thanks for having me too, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, hey, you, like the, you like the podcast or what, man? Yeah, What's going on, bro? Yeah. He showed me the one they did with Eric today, oh. so I was watching it today. Would you I like that good. episode? Yeah, it was really good. I mean, Ed- education. Though, you know? Next time we might have all three. Uh, you know what yeah. I mean? I don't know about three Raider fans. <laughs> hey, you know, before we get up out here, what you think about the Raiders? Playoffs? Yes. Come on now. Playoffs? The Colts? Carson Wentz is hurt this week. We're going to beat the Colts. And then next week, the Chargers. You we're definitely smash the Chargers, Chargers and get that revenge game, bro. Watch it. Man, if you think the Raiders are going to win or lose, put in the description, bro. <laughs> Let's go. Raider Nation, come I'm going to pick Step a winner. Up. Let's and, go. Uh, like I said, Value Talk Radio, we out of here.